This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Iraq's Prime Minister Maliki has become the subject of blame for failures in Iraq. How does President Bush now view his once close ally? Has the U.S. begun its countdown for troop withdrawal from Iraq? And will Maliki be able to hold on to power? The answers to these questions and more on this week's Mosaic Intelligence Report. Last November, when President Bush and the Iraqi Prime Minister met in Jordan, the President called al-Maliki the right guy for Iraq. Recently, however, Bush acknowledged a certain level of frustration with the Iraqi government's failure to unify its warring ethnic factions. Earlier this month, the U.S. President told reporters on the White House lawn, we're watching leaders learning how to be leaders. But then two days ago, Mr. Bush said that the Prime Minister Maliki is a good guy, a good man with a difficult job. Sounds confusing? Imagine how Maliki feels. No wonder he sounded angry at a recent press conference in Damascus. Everyone knows that the Iraqi government was elected by the Iraqi people, and no one has the right to place timetables or restrictions on it. The Iraqi people who elected the government are the only ones who can place timetables. Meanwhile, the U.S. intelligence community assesses that the Iraqi government will become more precarious over the next 6 to 12 months because of criticism by other members of the major Shia coalition as well as Sunni and Kurdish parties. This has prompted Senator John Warner, an influential Republican on defense matters, to urge President Bush to announce a plan to begin withdrawing U.S. troops from Iraq by September 15th. We simply cannot, as a nation, stand and put our troops at continuous risk. This is bad enough, but Mr. Maliki has also, it seems, united most members of the U.S. Congress against him. Calls for his removal have been echoing from both sides of the aisles. Even U.S. presidential candidate Hillary Clinton has made her position on Maliki very clear. Yes, the former darling of the U.S. administration and the greatest partner on the war on terror has been transformed into a pariah and a voodoo doll where everyone can pin their failures on him. But the attacks on the Iraqi prime minister should be seen as a convenient way of deflecting criticism of the surge strategy. While the dispatch of an extra 30,000 troops has led to a reduction in sectarian killings in Baghdad, the insurgents have simply found other targets outside of the capital. Last week, suicide bombers killed at least 400 people in northwestern Iraq when they targeted members of the Yazidi Kurds. It was the bloodiest event since the March 2003 invasion. The U.S. death toll has been increasing on a daily basis. Recently, the U.S. Army in Iraq suffered its most deadly helicopter crash in more than two years when 14 soldiers were killed in an accident blamed on mechanical failure. Meanwhile, in mid-September, General David Petraeus, the top U.S. commander in Iraq, and Ambassador Ryan Crocker are to report to Congress and the President about the impact of the troop buildup that Bush ordered in January, a report that will determine the future of U.S. involvement in Iraq. How will the report reflect on the surge? We can only guess, but one thing is for sure, expectations of further suicide attacks taking place is very high, and the spectacle of bombs going off as Petraeus speaks on Capitol Hill will be enough to render the general words moot. Another reason to blame everything on Maliki beforehand. I'm Jamal Dejani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mosaic. I'm Amy Goodman, host of Democracy Now!, here to ask you for support for Mosaic, world news from the Middle East. You know, in media news, a new study shows that corporate news coverage of the Iraq war has dropped sharply in the last four months. According to the Project for Excellence in Journalism, the Iraq war accounted for just 15 percent of news coverage, 19 percent of the network evening newscasts. We need more coverage of the Middle East, not less. We are talking right now about living in a time of war, and it is up to us in a democratic society to decide what to do about that. Mosaic provides information from the Middle East, from countries in the Middle East, from a Middle Eastern perspective. It is invaluable. And right now they need $200,000 to continue their work. 
to continue their coverage, to bring you their fall lineup of this essential program. The number to call to make your pledge is 866-485-8848. That's 866-485-8848. You can also pledge online at linktv.org. Please pledge as much as you can. Information is power. When you have information, you are empowered to do something about it. That's what Mosaic provides. Again, they're trying to raise $200,000. In order to do this, you can be a small or large part of that. Pledge 25, pledge 50, pledge 200, pledge 500. Mosaic needs you. If you've needed Mosaic for information, now they're asking you to help them reach their goal. That number again is 866-485-8848. That's 866-485-8848. Make your pledge, make it now. You can also pledge online at linktv.org. That number is the lifeline for Mosaic, 866-485-8848. Make the call that makes the difference. This is viewer-sponsored media. You are the engine of this program. Mosaic provides a unique perspective from many different countries in the Middle East. Please give your support to independent media, 866-485-8848. And thanks so much. This program was brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. television network devoted to global and national news with uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.